Hello Len, thanks for joining me. I'd like to begin by asking you to tell me about your background, your current role and what the future holds for you. Well, I've been in the social media space or digital space for some uh, 17 years now. Um, I was in Sharing AG um, in 1994 when I first really discovered the internet. Uh, I had various roles within Sharing AG, drove a lot of their uh, first websites, developed their global um, first global digital uh, strategy, and had a number of roles up until um, four years ago when Bayer took over Sharing. And um, there I was offered the position of uh, head of digital for Bayer's largest business unit, which is called General Medicine. And that's where I was up until uh, May, May this year. Um, so the last four months, I've, um, I've become a digital healthcare consultant. Uh, that's what I call myself right now. And I'm working with a variety of clients, uh, both within the industry and, and on the vendor side, and uh, basically trying to guide farmers um, as to the best way to use digital and social media, and working with vendors, uh, helping them to understand what farmer what farmer really needs. And I also have some uh, some options uh, in teaching and lecturing as well that I'm pursuing. Now, for a question that's always interesting to ask people: How do you define social media? Ah, definition time. Um, well, if you go and look at some of the, uh, I mean, there's a huge amount of stuff published on what is. What, what is social media? Um, one academic debate is about whether it's a platform or a channel. Uh, that's really academic. Uh, I tend to call it a platform. I, um, a channel implies that things are maybe just one way. If we say it's a platform, it, 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 it enables users of the, uh, of the platform to engage with one another, um, to collaborate with one another, to share. Um, and if you if you follow people like Clay Shirky, who's probably one of the uh, one of the leading pundits of social media, he talks about it being enabling, uh, empowering, and that's really what it is. If you think about it, it um, it it enables people to decentralise power. If you think of medium media, uh, just think about the riots recently in London. Uh, we, we were getting most of that feed from people with their own cameras and, and smartphones. It's decentralized the way that information is shared and, um, and, and, the way it's and the way we collaborate with it. What do you see as the biggest current challenges for digital and pharma? Well, um, I think you have to put digital into, into context. And one of the things we, we tend to forget, and certainly one of the things I, I try to remind people about, is if you look at the issues that confront pharma right now, um, digital is not really one of them. One of the biggest issues, I mean, there are, <laughs> there are probably 10, but one of the biggest ones um, that people talk about is obviously the declining productivity in research and development, i.e. new products are not being, um, not being developed. Um, product, R&D productivity is declining dramatically. Um, why is that? Various reasons. One of them is that big pharma is no longer capable of, of coming up with great ideas. These are more likely to be generated in small uh, biotech startups. So that's, that's a big issue. That means the days of the blockbuster are, are behind us. So um, if you think about that, I mean, to say nothing of reputation issues, regulatory issues, um, what's called the, the patent cliff. We're seeing a lot of major drugs going off patent in, in the next year or so. All of these things uh, really are, are, are very, very large issues for, for the pharma industry as a whole. How big is digital in that, in that scale of things? Well, it, it is important, but it, it doesn't, it, it's really not in the same order of magnitude of those issues um, that pharma confronts on, on the R&D if you look to see, um, I mean, one measure might be how much is actually spent on digital marketing as, as a percentage of, of real marketing spend. European companies are still spending no more than something like three to six or seven percent. In the US, that might go up to 10 percent. So it's still relatively small. So, the, um, so digital as such is important, but um, it has to be looked that in context of other things too. And I, I think if you go to conferences, um, 
one has the impression that the whole of farmers talking about social media, social media is the number one issue, and you come away perhaps with a false, false impression. If you go back to a brand team, you'll see that, and certainly what I was doing in the last uh, beginning of this year, talking to my brand teams, they were talking about many, many other things. I was giving the, you know, I'm going to say the last slot of the day on the brand team meeting, but it wasn't exactly the first slot. So again, I, I'm very cognizant of the fact that you have to be realistic about where digital is. It's important and it's becoming more important, but it's not, it's not going through a phase where everything will change radically. There is a steady progressive change and I think we have to bear that in mind. And what trends have you noted in regards to the use of healthcare social media by different groups? Trends. Um, again, if you look at spend, uh, you'll probably see that most of the spend in digital is still being um, is still being allocated to, to traditional things like websites, e-detailing, maybe closed loop marketing. Social media, um, if you think about social media, yes. If you look at the last two, two to three years, we've seen an explosion in farmers experimenting with social media. If you're f familiar with um, Dose of Digital Wiki, uh, which is a wiki that keeps track of farmers' uh, social media activities, you'll see that it's, uh, I mean, it's gone through the ro roof, the numbers of uh, farmers, for example, on Facebook using Twitter. Um, are they actually delivering value? I think one of the, the issues that we confront within pharma is actually understanding what we're doing. What, what are these things actually doing? Um, and I think that's where a lot of brand teams are having some, some problems, understanding, understanding the real value that a lot of these initiatives are delivering. For example, if you have a Facebook page, what is it really doing? Do, am I getting value for money out of that? Uh, what do customers really think? Um, so what I, what I think is going to be happening is that we'll find more and more farmers obviously experimenting with social media. Um, but as ever, the problems really are about culture. If you think about what social media represents, um, it's free, it's open, it's non-regulated. These are diametric opposites of the things that pharma represents. And that represents a major, major cultural issue for the industry. And for as long as there are no specific guidelines for the industry, either here or in the US, that makes the thing even more complicated. Um, where there's a regulatory vacuum, uh, pharma tends not to tread. It will prefer not to do anything. So we'll see huge reluctance and still, and we confront that today, pharma is reluctant to move ahead and do things in the social media space if it doesn't really know what the regulator environment is. Um, what, what it stipulates. It, it's unknown territory and it, it, it's entering a zone of risk that it doesn't want to doesn't want to enter. What changes have you observed structurally within pharma in response to the emergence of digital? Well, the, the internal uh, organisation of um, digital has gone through many phases. I think when I look back to mid-90s, late-90s, they were the times where we saw a lot of major farmers setting up huge centralized groups. I remember Pharmacia hit the headlines uh, sort of late 90s where it had uh, an enormous group set up, over 30 odd people, uh, governing digital across the globe. Uh, then we had a phase of decentralization. Then we went back to centralization. And I think really today, uh, it, the answer is it depends on your farmer, its culture, its structure, <laughs> and what it feels most comfortable doing. My own, my own take is really that I believe what's most effective, be it mid-sized farmer, small farmer, major farmers, is that you probably need a, a small centralized group to look after things like infrastructure. Th these things could be things like um, in, uh, content management systems, uh, hosting, maybe domain name go governance. But I think Generally, digital people have got to be close to the business. That means close to the brand teams, close to the business units. Um, and from my experience, that's the only way it really works effectively. Large centralized groups just tend to be too far away from the business to be really effective. So I think we, we will see all sorts of models. Um, again, being dependent very much on what the corporate culture is and what the corporate structure is. No, no one single 
one model fits all answer on that one. And what online healthcare strategies and campaigns have you noted that have been, in your opinion, a success either from within pharma or outside of pharma? Well, I would like to think I've been involved in a number of successful um, <laughs> digital campaigns. I think my the, the one I'm most proud of um, was a website and a community that I launched in uh, 97. Uh, I've talked about this great deal and it's it's not unknown, but um, Sharing uh, launched a drug for um, the treatment of multiple sclerosis. And we launched a website called the MS Gateway, which was a non-branded website, hence the name MS Gateway. And uh, shortly after its launch, we discovered that multiple sclerosis patients really did like to talk to one another and we launched a community. Um, it was a it was an open community. Well, when we first launched it, it was a very structured community, but we, we learned very quickly that what patients really wanted were unstructured uh, communities in which they could talk to one another and talk to us in ways, in any way that they wanted about any topic that they wanted. So this, um, this initiative uh, is still going today. Uh, we have, I think, uh, something like 20 communities around the globe. Uh, there are communities in Asia, Latin America, and in Europe. And it's been very successful. And, it, and it's followed and it's done the things that everyone now acknowledges to be um, the right thing to do in terms of connecting with the community, um, not dictating, being two-way, being open, not being brand-centric. Um, and I, I'm still very proud of the fact that we we made we made the right decisions way back in '90 to do '96, '97 to do that, and that model has been a success up until this day. Um, so I, I think that's been um, that's been a great learning, and it's uh, and it's been um, it's and it's and it's underlined all the things that I, I read about today about what farmers should be doing in social media space. So if, if the right model is followed, I think pharma can be successful, but it, it, uh, it takes a great deal of effort and a lot of convincing um, people internally uh, to do it. Um, and how do you think pharma will adapt now that Facebook take, have disabled the ability to turn off external comments on company pages? I think most will just uh, drop their pages. I think they'll take them offline. For one simple reason, I think if they keep them online, uh, they'll be entering this regulatory no man's land and basically I don't think farmer want to do that and if they keep them online again it would require um, an awful lot of internal effort organization monitoring which I don't think farmers have or even want to make available so the easiest option a lot of people if you go and look at Twitter right now look at the co comments a lot of people say it's a cop out um, farmer shouldn't be doing that but I think many farmers just don't have an option they just have to um, and finally, we recently saw Bayer in trouble with the PNCPA over some Twitter activity that was seen as promotional. So what do you think it and other pharma companies um, learned from this? Yeah, I read that and saw that too. A silly, a silly mistake, a very silly mistake. Um, I, I would attribute that to the fact that the people that did it probably were not um, or did not have a set of internal social media guidelines. Um, I can't comment on that, whether the work guidelines in place, but had there been, I'm sure there would have been reference to the way Twitter should be used. It's quite clear if you're using a Twitter channel, it should not refer to brand. Um, certainly not in, not in Europe, and you have to think about the fact that Twitter is also a global channel. But if it's driven from a European subsidiary, then clearly there should not be reference to a brand or a link to a brand. Uh, that's clearly just the same, uh, effectively. So, silly mistake. Shouldn't have happened. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.